the other day when we were TV testing, someone came down the lane and uh, Mr. Mouncy and said, stuck his head over the handling system as we were all hooping and hollering and jumping on cows, and said, There's two sheep wandering, well, a sheep wandering down the road with some lambs. And we were like, Oh. And he said, It says boy on the side of it. And I'm like, Oh, it's that bloody Herdwick. Anyway, um, it got ran down into the village and penned up in an old field that somebody doesn't use. So I was going to go and collect said sheep. And today on Village WhatsApp, very useful piece of kit is Village WhatsApp. Um, there's a sheep wandering down uh, the road, in the middle of the road with its two lambs. And it says, right on the side of it. <laughs> I have um, tracked it down to our neighbor Malcolm's house. Roy is just turned up at the end of the lane. I can see him and he's gonna make sure that the traffic doesn't hit the sheep on the way out and we're just gonna run it home and lock it in a cage forever. Anyone want a free Herdwick Cross? Herdwick Cross Texel, two lambs, built in, the same boy on the side of them. Like, I can't even deny that they're ours, can I? I don't even know where she's going. She doesn't know where she's going. God, what a drama. That sheep has no sense of direction at all. Um, luckily, we knew the lady that pulled up in the road, Kim from in the village, and yeah, what an embarrassment. So I grabbed the sheep, because um, it was gonna be running down that way to Crossrig, um, and then its lambs came near, so I grabbed its lamb, and then gave it to Roy, and then its other lamb came near, so I grabbed its lamb. It would have been really impressive on a video, I'll tell you though, like, I'm really gutted I didn't get it on video. Um, I think I've got tonsillitis, so hence we're looking really rough, I'm so sorry. Um, yeah, all my tonsils on this side have swelled up. So I'm just gonna try and not be ill until after tomorrow because we really need to get on with this TB test. I've been to Cars, um, yesterday when JC came, he said he was watching, him and Hazel were watching a video and the sheep that died, and he said that they shouldn't, I shouldn't have lost two because I'm feeding them and you know, they're fairly healthy looking. Anyway, um, he said they may be getting staggered, so go and get some um, magnesium buckets. So I've just got some magnesium buckets, um, Chris Lake's ones, and then I've also got some softer teats. These are a lot softer than the white ones that I'm using. I'm hoping the lambs will get on them a lot easier, the pet lambs. That was a good aim. The old quad bike we had, it didn't have a gauge on it, it was broken, and it used to run out of petrol, like, honestly, every week. That thing has never been run out of petrol once. Um, I think it completely knackered the old one, to be fair. But we are feeding the TB test tomorrow, um, and then you'll probably start to see a few more, um, like, groups of animals being sold, for instance. They will be clearing off pretty instantly to be honest they are way um old enough the avatars like them below 30 months um on a on a very um blunt practical level they like them below a certain age so they will go off to someone like joe seals a finishing uh unit a finishing farm and they'll have a couple of months these could be about june last year these could be about 22 months now something like that um, and they need to be um, done and dusted and finished and eaten kind of thing before 30. So they'll be going to someone else's house to finish off. That then gives us a chance to start moving little things like this to split them up and get them into some separate groups. And that always does well for us, splitting them up a little bit and gives them chance to grow. I think when they're in bigger groups, they, they have to fight for their place a little bit more. And they always seem to do better when you segregate them, especially into like size and weight differences. So we'll pick out the smaller ones and have them in a smaller group and bigger ones and have them in a bigger group. I look really old today.
So I am just going to make a brew and then I'm going to go out and I'm going to skin this calf. I have a new calf um, to put a jacket on to and then hope she takes it as her own. I will tell you before I'm going to do anything gross. So don't think I'm just going to spring, you know, gruesomeness on you. Um, yeah, no, I will I will pre-warn you before I do anything disgusting. Um, and then if you so wish, you can turn off because I know it's not everyone's cup of tea. But I feel by showing it you, it's honest. We do it. It works. It's a really old technique. Pretty much similar to wearing a sheepskin jacket. The animal's already dead. It doesn't feel it. Um, and obviously the cow then gets a new calf that's able, you know, and alive, obviously. It's more from an educational point of view, if I'm perfectly honest. Um, I just, I'm not showing it you for like clickbait or likes or anything like that. Um, hence why I'm telling you before I'm... Okay, I am in the workshop. The calf is underneath me. Bobcat's ready. If you don't like gross stuff, look away. Just, just fast forward. So here we have very dead calf. Um, what I'm going to do, identical to lambs. Can you see how... It is fairly dwarfish, but not like to the point that you would be alarmed by it. Its legs are slightly short between the joints, if you look, um, but nothing too startling. But yeah, when it stood up, you could definitely tell that there was something not quite right because his body's quite big. It's also got quite a bull neck, um, quite a big fat neck um, and not over the top, but a, a short face. Um, but yeah, it just, it wasn't meant to be. It's really sad. I don't like doing it, but it is a necessity. And I want that cow to take that calf that's on the other side of this wall. She's not gonna, unless I do this. She, she just isn't gonna. And for those who say, why don't you wet adopt it like you would with sheep? There's no afterbirth. This calf's a week old. There is no afterbirth. There's no fluids. There's no smell to take apart from what is on the calf right now. Cut around there in a blanket like this. I'll do all of this here up to the middle there, okay? And then I'll leave this hole and just two, two legs for, like two leg holes. And then I'll try and leave as much of the neck as possible. So I'll probably do it quite high up if I can. Um, it makes it hard work for me, but it's just one of them things. But yeah, that's what I'm gonna aim to do. With a lamb, I do it lying down because you can flip it over and it's really easy because they're only tiny. You can hear that calf's hungry already, which is a good sign. So it means it might try and jump on the mum because she's got bags of milk. She's not going to be happy at first because she'll be fairly tender because I haven't milked her out today. Obvious reasons because the calf didn't need it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little incision in the... I'll go within the belly um, and I'll stick the airline in. So I'll start a time lapse from just over there in front of me. Um, if you don't like gross things, look away now. So let me show you where I have, right? So the calf is hooked up here next to me and I have cut around its back end and in a V around its navel. Can you see there like that? So there's just a strip taken out here. Like it's hard to show you without like being totally disgusting. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's kind of hard work to be able to show you such a Mm, unpalatable process so hopefully the skin will come off pretty easy because i've blown it off with the airline it doesn't altogether um, negate the need for a bit of pulling and, and heaving Look at you. Oh, it's a pretty carfuls. And he's got two tails. Can you see through where the bottom hole is? So we've just brought her into the handling system and I've just put the calf next to her just to relieve a little bit of pressure. Um, because obviously she's gonna be quite tight bag because she wasn't milked out this morning. 
she sorry i just want to say she's got half an idea roy's just got the mum some feet so she's quite happy and we're just going to see if the calf jumps on steady lady steady steady good calf Go on, see if we can get on. See if we can grab it. Go on. I'll learn how to do that. Grab a hold. Oh, there you go. A clever, clever calf, that is. So while Calf Calf is stood here having a drink, I can show you what the little jacket looks like. As you can see, that there is the skin. The skin goes. It's open here. And then he, it starts about here, and then it's completely solid, apart from leg holes. Sorry, calf, sorry. I don't want to disturb it too much, because it'll just knock it off its flow. Go on back, good lass. Go back. Right, head. Under. Because we've just learned how to suck. I tell you what, I bet that cow feels miles better from having that milk stripped out by that calf. So hopefully, by the time this calf has a skin on, and the cow's milk is running through the calf, it then starts to smell like its own and she will take it. Um, she's not, um, to be honest, she's not displeased with it. She hasn't kicked it. She hasn't done anything negative towards it. She kind of, we put it in and she just kind of looked at it, sniffed it and just stood there. All that she wants is another baby. She's gone tomorrow, but all that she wants is another baby. Yeah. So thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. And um, I hope overall that wasn't too gruesome for you and you learned something. And if you're farming, I hope that you probably learned something that you could put into practice um, and then it makes it all worthwhile. So thanks for watching and I'll see you tomorrow.